numbers. Okay, now, and so this binary system, let's say, whether people call it Dwarf Star or Nibiru or, or Wormwood or Planet X, just say, let's say binary systems, binary. As it's approaching closer, it's shaking the heavens, which the Bible says, the Bible says the heavens are going to be shaken. Is it affecting the sun? See, if the sun is protecting us, what if something's affecting the sun to the point? What does that do to the earth? And is that possible? We're getting ready to see this. Is this a part of the book of Revelation, the, the outpouring of the wrath of God on its way? What's happening here, Mike? Well, to date, in every observed binary system, when the smaller sun right, uh, comes into the active sun, one of the more immediate um, transitions that you begin to see is that the active suns, all their photons, are redirected to the other sun. The other sun that's coming in starts taking material, uh, starts taking all this material from the lit sun, right? So there's a redirection of photons. Photons, that's how we see light. If they're redirected, we won't see light. We'll see a dim red everywhere. It'll look like everything in the earth is red. That's what it'll look like. Um, now that happens during a point that almost you can you can almost call it parity, but there's a certain point when one sun is going around the other, when there's a there's about a 72 hour period or 24 to 72 hour period where everything uh, is red, and that's because the other sun has sucked up all the materials, all the photonic materials from the lit sun, uh, and then it swings back out at a high, a super high rate damaging stuff on the way out so when it comes in it speeds up as it comes in it speeds up so if we were to see if if we are in a binary system i believe we are if we're in a binary system and anybody spots anything in the sky right it's already too late because the speed is exponential as it comes in closer to the sun it will speed up that the, you're looking at forces of inertia you're looking at um, uh, arc forces arc physics and everything else it, and that means the closer an object comes to a center point of gravity it's going to speed up exponentially to yeah. the point where if you see it one day and it's way out there and you think it won't bother you the next day you come out it's going to be over your head and it'll be too late so um you'd see that but even before that you would see the straight planets. You would see some of the debris that orbits that star come in, which means you would have an uptick in atmospheric activity. You would have an uptick in inbounds and everything else because you would begin to see the remnants of the outer skirts of this system, the solar system coming into another solar system. So is that what this debris cloud's about? Ah, it seems like that's what we're seeing. That seems like, and uh... it would speed up exponentially as it enters in until it hits the point where the planets change their orbits once again now they've been studying something for quite a while now it takes it takes you to have some sort of an uh, uh, electronics on the planet itself but um the temperatures on the planets are shooting up rapidly i mean rapidly um a lot of uh, there's a team right now that has their eye on jupiter um because they already are aware of the gases. By the way, I don't know where they came up with gas giant because that's not what it is. Anyway, they um, Jupiter is uh, like a gatekeeper, right? Okay. It's ancient, it, Jupiter is an ancient god, by the way. And Jupiter used to be very close to Earth. Does anybody know that? Jupiter and Saturn were very close to Earth. No, I did not know that. They had artist uh, depictions where they used to, uh, not depictions, but when they were laying out cities, they would use Saturn right for okay. part of their measurements so they can measure distance because you could count the rings in on, on saturn uh saturn was very close saturn kind of looked like a hunter's moon a big moon that's what it looked like it, it was very close and at that time when saturn was closed um they found something else out um, that there was an exchange of the it's it's um uh, forces around it and Earth's forces around it causing plasma conduits to form back and forth. We'll see that again. We'll see plasma conduits form again and again because some of this debris coming in, well, it, it's another large body with a molten core and uh, anything that has a molten core is generating its own field. Those fields, when they start coming into proximity, are going to exchange uh, all sorts of materials like protons, electrons. They're going to exchange it. That will damage a lot of stuff on the surface. That will cause, that's going to cause some 
bad stuff to happen. As it begins to happen, you always see an uptick in the electrostatic potential in all every planet's atmosphere. They see it on Jupiter. This is why they're looking at Jupiter, because there are some weird storms start to happen on Jupiter. They're starting to observe all the time. There's a there's a, this is partly what that little green file had in it about the Jupiter collision. Uh, they were using it, but, it, but they were saying that storms would actually be taking prior to that. Uh, that the, 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 the Jupiter is going to be reacting due to everything happening to it, and that's what you're saying. Yeah, there are going to be some things, and Mars is our early indicator. Mars also acts as a shield, and what happened to Mars could potentially happen to Earth this time. This yeah. time, this is this is probably the last one of the last cycles we go through because in a binary system there are many cycles, many times this other star would have so passed. Mike, so, Mike, I'm 50, 59 years old, uh, and if, let's say I live to be uh, eighty, and let's say that's uh, by reason of strength in the Bible, am I going to make that, or will this stuff really hit before that? I think it's going to hit well before that. It, yeah. In fact. I, listen, Pastor, I, I don't really believe people have the time. They, I think everybody's going to be caught off guard. Yeah. I think that um, as these things happen, they're going to be, which is why some of the calculations that I do, if I add that exponential component, I'm right on the money. A yeah. lot of times I'm right on the money. If I don't add that exponential component, if I don't allow uh, for that speeding up of things, I'm way off. So with certain formulas, even they are telltale signs that um, we have a consistent uptick in all the right places, for which means we're in proximity to something. Now, people won't see the second sunlight they think either. What they're going to see, see it, will they? uh, they're going to see the damage in heavens because our sun is going to change its color. Is it going to go out? Could we have three, could three days of darkness happen like it did in Egypt? It'll be with our solar system right now. It'll be more like it'll be more than three days. It'll be more like twenty-one days of photon redirection. When the photons redirect, when the other sun is is in proximity to ours, which actually means you know that's millions of miles away, but still it's going to be in proximity. All the light coming, all the rays, all that solar wind coming from the sun is going to be redirected to the other object. It's going to make a U-turn. Back to the other object uh, and then we won't see light from the sun it'll look dim red to us it'll be extremely hot it'll be like sitting in front of a lit stove is what it's going to be like so during that time hardly anybody's going to be able to go outside in fact during that time when the sun is putting off that infrared heat that will not be redirected just the photons infrared heat okay. is the same heat you get when you're when you put your face in your oven Right? And it's hot. You're yeah. feeling that infrared heat. So imagine this, Pastor Imagine people on Earth, the sun is putting off infrared heat. You know, one day it's sunshine and the next day it's just red. And yeah. they go and put their hand in a red ray coming through a window and it burns it. And so they shut it, right? But at, it's heating up their whole house. People will be trying to protect themselves from sunlight at that time because yeah. everywhere it touches, it's going to heat up. It's going to heat well, that's in the Bible, and it says that that's t a time will come when men will be scorched from the heat of the sun. And it's like a, a microwavable heat uh, moment. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like that. It's, it's much like that. Much like that. Yeah, Infrared heat gets really hot. Um, but even before that, we're going to find some dangers. There was, a, there was an, an incident that happened at one of the poles, and a part of our atmosphere, a chunk of it, was taken out. But the chunk of the atmosphere taken out before it collapsed back in on itself. It was like putting a person in a microwave. Uh, there were deaths involved. That happened in less than three minutes. So without our atmosphere, we would be cooked just like we were in a microwave without the atmosphere. Now, I want people to know this because some of the issues they're going to cover up has to deal with the atmosphere. They're going to dance around it because they know that if, if people start finding out what's happening in the atmosphere, like some of these bubble anomalies, uh, that's going to scare people. But they won't be able to, here's the sad part about it, as it dries everything up, I mean, it's going to dry everything up. Wow. When we get there, Famine. As it dries things up, people are, people are not going to know what to do. They're not going to be able to make proper preparations. Um, they won't understand what's happening. It'll be a very chaotic time during that. And, and that will only be the beginning. 
of quite a few uh, episodes of a, of a total redo of what we're going through. sounds like the sun will go through several different manifestations in the scriptures. It sounds like you're saying the same thing. One, we're going to see uh, the sun will be partially hidden. Okay? Uh, one place it says a third of the sun will be smitten. Okay? Uh, a third part of them will be darkened. Uh, then we got this, men will curse God and gnaw their tongues for pain and blaspheme God because the the, the uh, scorching uh, that they'll get from the sun. So I read through here, there's several different places in the scriptures that say this. Is that, is that, uh, am I? Well, I believe that, but, I, but also I believe that all that timing. See, people believe that they can calculate how long it will take for these things to take place. Yeah. That way, they've observed. First of all, there are so many things that have been observed, like in a, in a binary system. There are so many things that have been observed in space that are impossible. Um, I'll I tell you this. The hand of God is, is, is real. And um, right. it's real, meaning there's no one who can calculate a disaster, right? Right. Because if you were to calculate the fastest, like a hurricane, this year, people are going to see hurricanes, all right? But they're going to say, my God, how did this so big? How does that form? How does that happen? How can we, how can our atmosphere sustain 250 mile an hour winds? What's driving it? What's happening here? Where's all that cold coming from in the middle of nowhere in July? You know, in July when it's when it hits negative 15 in an area that's normally, you know, summer and hot and has no winter ever. Where'd that negative 15 degrees come from? What's happening here? So they're going to have questions about what are these rapid changes we're going through? Um, volcanism. It's going to continue to rise, but with a vengeance. And and this is one of those times, uh, in fact, currently tracking some of the pressures inside the earth. Uh, my goodness, my heart goes out to a lot of people who live on the coasts of several different places because there's no way. You're, you're talking chunks being displaced this time. So swells will be seen, um, but it will happen so fast, it'll be there'll be no time for people to flee. No time for people to flee. The pressure's built up too high. We've been absorbing all these exotic rays all this time. Not enough eruptions, not enough earthquakes to offset for some of that pressure. And it's all building. The entire earth is swelling. You know how a shield volcano, it'll start to uh, swell? Yep. And the entire earth is swelling. It's swelling to the point where they have digitized all the guidance systems and some of the redundant systems on some very fast aircraft because the faster you go in an aircraft, the more you have to calculate uh, inaccuracies. So it, with hypersonic weapons, this is a nightmare because it has to do recalculations so fast. Why? Because of pressure changes are phenomenal. They're off the scale. I don't know if people notice, but the boiling point has changed uh, rapidly in several states. That we have people out there right now who do a boiling. They boil water every single day at specific times. It started to change a month ago, and it changed in several different places, went back to normal, changed again, verified, and changed. So we certainly have changes that are off the scale. Well, we, we're hitting that point where it's lighting a match. A match is harmless until you strike it the right way, and then poof, and we're going to hit that flash point where things really go up. But I, I, I suspect this will happen during a time because all these events affect the magnetosphere, which affect people of flesh, and they're going to go nuts before this happens. That's Paul. We haven't. The, the, what happened in the capital city? That wasn't so much a product of politics. That was. People have to understand something. When when you're aggravated, when you are changing mentally, any excuse is a good excuse to vent. And what these people are doing are venting. It doesn't matter what the situation is. They're going to use every situation. You're going to see the same type of behavior come out of just about every situation. Is that why there's more and more rioting all around the world? For different, different political reasons, different situations, people are fed up. And then uh, we're seeing more and more and more violence pouring into the streets globally. That's right. It's not structured. It's not for a real reason. People, are they, they find a cause. And if that cause supports them venting, they're going to go jump into it. 
right, to relieve themselves of whatever's inside them. It's almost like a kid who can't sit still, who has to wiggle their legs, and for they, they just can't do it. They'll go crazy before they stop wiggling their legs. Well, humanity has cabin fever right now. Think about that. Think wow. about humanity having cabin fever. Yeah. And I mean, like, real cabin fever. We're talking about the trauma and everything. So any situation is, that's one of Satan's primary weapons, so. He'll do anything to turn one yeah, against the right. other. I don't play his games. No. I won't turn against anybody because no. I'm not serving Satan in any capacity. Amen. I don't know what, what Christ stood for. But um, people are going this route. They don't have Christ. They just don't have So it. important and, uh, you said that, Mike. We have to, we are not, we have the mind of Christ. We're not to walk by the flesh. The Bible tells us there is now therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You got to get in a spiritual realm with Christ and stay there. And don't, Amen. yeah, and you can't start all this. We got to have unity. <laughs> we have unity in the body of Christ because it's going to get crazy. Mike.